Hi, everybody. Thank you for that warm welcome. I didn't uh, have TJ here today to introduce me, so felt kind of lost, but that helps, helps me do it, so thank you. Um, I'm going to try really hard not to go over my hour a lot of time today. <laughs> yeah, everybody laughs, I know. <laughs> really, I think I've got it today. We'll see. <laughs> um, so I'll get started right away. But um, welcome. So glad you're all here. Um, everything today, easy, simple, can be modified to your taste. And uh, ingredients are easy to find. What else can I say? Um, that's about it. And I hope you enjoy it. We're going to start off with the punset recipe. So punset's a traditional Filipino recipe. Um, I've modified it a smidge. It does not have pork in it, uh, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, but the thing I love about this meal is that it's a one-pot meal. So simple. And it just comes together really easily. You truly just throw everything in the pot and let it cook. There we go. Um, who knows another name for mirfla? Yes. Celery, onion, and carrot. Throw in some celery overboard there. But in addition to my celery, onion, and carrot, I'm going to add some green cabbage. Now, I debated adding the cabbage today because cabbage doesn't smell very good when it cooks. <laughs> and I always want to um, be invited back when I come to the <laughs> library. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that... Um, yeah, hoping that the smell doesn't uh, you know, reach the farthest corners of the library. But cabbage is so delicious in this dish. And cabbage is really, really good for you. So I'm just going to let that heat up. Let's see. You know... <laughs> Trader Joe's, um, I did not buy pre-cut veggies today, but I'm just looking, I'm using an old container. Mirepoix from Trader Joe's. <laughs> if you need a really fast dinner, swing by Trader Joe's, you're all set, yeah. I actually have to be honest, um, my son helped me prep today. I have a special guest, just... Uh, <laughs> My son uh, just graduated from college last weekend, so yay. <laughs> so I am delighted to have him home. It's the first time he's been in town when I've had my class, so finally all these years later he gets to come and see how great the library experience is. So while my um, veggies are cooking, I'm actually going to turn it way up and try and um, sear some of these veggies a bit. If you can get the veggies, some parts of them uh, browned, it'll really infuse a nice flavor throughout your dish. So I'm going to try and just sear some of those, and then, but not cook them necessarily. They'll cook when we add the noodles. But the secret ingredient to this Easy Punset is um, some bouillon cubes called not chicken. <laughs> they can be found at Whole Foods, Sprouts, Amazon. You're familiar with them? Yeah. You can use miso paste. Oh. Oh, the, the liquid bouillon or the, yeah, you can use that. I feel like, um, these cubes have a little more flavor than that, but um, it's whatever you prefer. I've yet to find one of those um, ready-made little cartons of veggie broth um, or similar that I thought have had a really great flavor to them. 
So um, I do like the bullion cubes because you can adjust um, the strength of it a little more easily. Whereas if you buy a carton that's pre-mixed, you get what you get. Yes. Yes, yes. Anytime you see a variation co in colors, it means there's uh, different levels of different nutrients. Represent you could, the only problem with the red cabbage is that it bleeds. So you'll end up with a pinkish noodle dish. <laughs> They're both very good for you, the red and the white. And actually, the fun fact about cabbage, and onions for that matter, is they actually are better for you cooked. They have um, more antioxidants in them once they're cooked. You could, I'm not sure. It's, it has a little bit different texture. I enjoy Naba cabbage, um, cook, or sorry, raw more than I do cooked. But yeah, you can certainly do whatever, you know, if you happen to have some of that. I'm gonna put a good amount of black pepper on here. So as you may have guessed, some lucky people get to go home and make punset today. <laughs> I um, bought these at the Filipino market that's by the airport. And I actually went in for a different brand that I'm used to using and they didn't have it. So one of the rules in doing a cooking demonstration is that you never use a product that you haven't used before. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna learn together, it's an opportunity. We'll see if this be behaves the same way that the one I'm familiar with does. I know that some of you have told me that you, um, I think somebody in here might have celiacs and then some people are just avoiding wheat. These are not made with wheat, so this is a gluten-free meal if that's important to you. If there's another type of veggie you enjoy, you can throw it in. Sorry, was that a question? Right now it's on 425. I'm gonna wait until that cooks a little before I add the garlic. Break up the bouillon cubes a little bit. If I was at home, I would use some warm water for this to dissolve the bouillon cube a little before I put it in the mixture, but it'll heat up once it's in there. It doesn't dissolve very well in cold water. That's okay. All right. Sorry, I can't hear when I'm right behind that. Um, no, they're not particularly salty. Yeah. Sorry? Was there another question? Um, someone wondered if um, these have a, a very high sodium content. They do not. Some of them do. Some are very high in sodium. And a lot of them contain MSG as well. This one does not, and it is not extremely high in sodium. It definitely has some sodium, so I won't be adding any other sodium to the mixture. Uh, Edward and Sons, not chicken.
I have used Better Than Bullion, and I don't enjoy it as much as I like this one. I think it's okay, but I don't love it. Honest opinion. <laughs> All right. So, because I'm really paranoid about blowing by my hour again, I think um, instead of letting that brown, I'm going to go ahead and get it going with the noodles. So these sheets of noodles, just put those right on top of your vegetables. And whether it will take one or two, I don't know. We're going to find out together. So I'm going to just pour my broth over the top. Question? I'm sorry. I did not. I'm actually going to use my garlic press and put that in there now. This garlic press is from the Pampered Chef. <laughs> I've had it since the 90s, I think. Um, someone told me they're still in business. Um, but I have never, even with my access to like chef's warehouses and whatever, I've never found a garlic press that worked as well. You do not have to peel the clove of garlic. You just put the whole clove in and it perfectly empties out the husk. I do sometimes. It's a nice time saver, um, but it doesn't have the flavor that the fresh garlic has. I do have a bottle in my, uh, a jar in my refrigerator at home, and it's, you know, sometimes life is busy and we need shortcuts, but I do prefer the fresh. Add a little bit more water. <laughs> Is there anything I can do? <laughs> okay. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to keep this um, noodle disc down in the liquid. Never a dull moment, right? <laughs> I'm gonna put the lid. Why is it doing that now? It's never done that before. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. You know what? The higher temperature. That's very strange. Yeah, it does. I've turned it down, and now it doesn't do it. And I normally cook on this temperature that it's at now. Hmm. Okay. Mystery solved. Sorry it took me so long. <laughs> All right. Does it smell good, or does it smell like cabbage?
Okay, so for the recipe I typed up for you guys, um, the quantities will work with one square of the noodles. Um, these come four to a bag, but my vegetable ratio is a little off. It's more about vegetables and less about the noodles, but um, so if you want to add another square of noodles, just increase your water if you make this recipe. So um, not last week, but the week before, who was here for the breakfast class? Yay, thank you guys. Um, I showed you one of the products I love called Just Egg. And I mentioned that it is made from mung bean sprouts, or mung beans. Um, and I told you that I was experimenting on my own and trying to make some, um, but I couldn't get rid of the green husk on the beans, so I ended up with an ugly green product. Um, but when I was at the Filipino market, I um, found <laughs> some mung beans without the green husk on them. So I will be experimenting with this over the summer and um, figure out a recipe to share with you guys in the fall on how to make your own fantastic egg substitute. So stay tuned. Um, I will officially be back in the fall. I'm sure hoping to see you guys here. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys coming, I appreciate you guys sharing with your friends, and uh, I really appreciate the library sponsoring this class. It's so great that it's free, right? Yeah, normally cooking classes can be pretty expensive, um, but the library sponsors this for all of you, and I'm very, very grateful about that. Sorry, let me step away. What was the question? Uh, a cookbook in the works. I'll get it figured out. Um, it's on the back burner, but it'll happen. It's um, two, two things I'm, I'm kind of sort of working on. One is cookbook, and the other is um, a destination uh cooking school in Japan. So I'm hoping all of you will come and uh, enjoy class in Japan. Yes, they've promised me. <laughs> no, I have made that pitch, believe me. <laughs> and who knows, you never know. I'll leave this here in case anybody wants to look at that later. And I need to figure out if these noodles are tender. They probably are. So isn't that easy? You just literally throw everything in one pan and then straight to the serving platter. I would call it more of an entree. All the veggies, all the noodles, everything contains some protein. When you put it all together, but if you want more, actually that's perfectly done. Um, you could always um, cook some tofu look like we cooked it last week. Put some tofu strips in there. Edamame would be great. Yes, it would. So here we go. Yeah, traditionally, my mother-in-law is Filipina, and she makes her pancit with pork. What was that? Oh, yeah, <laughs> one serving. I'm just going to take my fork, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. <laughs> I did, I just used one square. If you wanted to use two, just increase your water or your broth. Yeah, I think so. 
I'm just going to give it some dark green color, a little parsley. And there we go, easy, easy peasy fun fit. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh huh. Yep. It'll when it gets cold, it all kind of tightens up and looks gross. But when you warm it up, it all separates and is nice again. So, um, hope you give it a try. I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget to email me pictures of it when you make it. That makes my day. Wow, I was messy today. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the empanadas. And let's see. I'm going to switch these two things out. So I don't have an oven here, so obviously I can't bake the empanadas for you. But what I want to do is demonstrate how easy it is to make um, the dough. I think I might have put something on there about, don't be afraid of this recipe. <laughs> Just the thought of making pie crust or dough, I know is, seems like a lot, but it's really, really easy if you have a food processor. <laughs> if you don't have a food processor, you can make it the old fashioned way. Um, but I just want to show you how quickly it comes together if you do it this way. Whoops. Okay. I'm going to use some, um, it's called Earth Balance Vegan Butter. There are multiple brands made with multiple things. Um, if you find one, you don't like it, keep trying. There are good ones and there are bad ones out there. Um, but uh, this one is really nice for baking. So I'm going to just, let's see here. So this can be made ahead of time. You can freeze it. You can keep it in the refrigerator for about a week, or you can freeze it indefinitely as long as it's tightly wrapped. You can use it for sweet things, savory things. It's just um, very versatile crust, and like I said, super easy to put together. Um, I'm using an organic all-purpose flour. If you don't have organic, at least make sure that you get the unbleached. Um, flour is generally chemically bleached so that it's perfectly white and uniform. You don't need the chemicals. So make sure you at least get unbleached, but um, organic even better. It sure is. Whole Foods store brand. Yeah. So I'm just going to put two and a half cups of flour in my food processor. Who's counting? Is that? This is five? Okay. Thought so. Just testing you. <laughs> Definitely, as long as it's tightly wrapped. 
All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, sea salt in there. <laughs> what does it have? I think a teaspoon, does that sound right? Anybody? Thank you. And if I'm going to make something sweet, um, like a pie or fruit or something, I'll add um, the full amount of sugar. This is for something savory, so I'm just going to put a smidge, like less than a teaspoon. Um, but I would put the, a tablespoon of the vegan sugar if um, if I was going to use it for a pie or something sweet like that. It's a great dough for chicken pot pie. You can do all kinds of things. So I'm just going to do a quick, quick stir to blend the salt. And then I'm going to put the cold butter substitute in. And this recipe, um, I made this recipe this morning, and the yield was 13 empanadas. So it doesn't make a huge quantity. But enough for one pie or some empanadas. Just going to drop the butter in. And I'm going to process it again, just some quick pulses, just to break that butter down a little bit. Just until there's small little beads of the butter. And then a third a cup of water. And I don't trust myself. There we go. And you're going to stop it right before it turns into a ball. And I like to use some wax paper to put this on. Saves in the cleanup. But look how easy that is. There's your pie crust. Whoops, and look at the mess. <laughs> um, but it's perfect. It holds together. It doesn't stick to your hands. Um, it's ready to go. So super easy. So please don't be afraid of this recipe. Give it a try. Make something sweet. Make something savory. And um, send me pictures. See how nice it is? Doesn't stick. Doesn't make a mess. It's just, it's perfect every time. And it's so tender and so flaky. And it just about melts in your mouth. So I think you will like that recipe. If you... Um, I'm just going to tell you, I use a rolling pin at home. But if you don't have one, a drinking glass, you can put some flour on it and use that like a little mini rolling pin. And then for my emp empanadas today, you can use a giant cookie cutter. But I ended up using this container as my cutout for my empanada shells because it was just the size I wanted. So you don't need any fancy tools or equipment to make these. Um, you can just make do with whatever you have at home. If you don't have a food processor um, or anything else that's normally used for making pie crust, you can do it the way my 
grandmother taught me to make pie crusts many years ago in a mixing bowl with two butter knives. Okay. Yep. But if you have one of these, use it so easy. Well, it's going to vary depending on how thick you like it. I like the dough, so I tend to make mine a little thicker. It's very forgiving. Um, it doesn't crack that easily, so you can make it fairly thin if that's your preference to have a thinner dough. Um, but I rolled mine a little bit on the thicker side. So really, it's up to you. I'm not going to tell you an exact number because just um, experiment and see, see what you like. So, put those in hiding for a minute. Then I'm going to put these on a platter. If you're having people over and you want to make empanadas, have them look pretty. You can just take a couple of lettuce leaves, some tomato. I'm just going to roll these up and slice them. Does anybody remember what that's called? It's chiffonade cut, right. You guys are good. You pay attention or you already knew that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to break it up and scatter it on the plate. And then I'm going to put my empanadas out. There they are. These are addictive. Addicting. There's, you just, you have one and you just want one more, and one more, one more. And it needs a little color, so let's put a little tomato on there. And then who went home and made chipotle sauce? Anybody? Nobody? Oh, crushed. <laughs> that was from our breakfast burrito class. But I'm just going to take some of the sauce and Drizzle it a little bit. And there we go. Use up the rest of my parsley. And there we go. Empanadas. Mm. Thank you. Yes. Um, there's a filling. Um, that has Mexican spices. I used taco seasoning and garlic and onion. Um, I used a beef substitute. You can put all kinds of things in there. But um, that's what I used today, is um, exactly like the uh, recipe shows. But you don't have to flavor it that way if you don't like the Southwestern spices, the chili and the garlic, you can just uh, salt and pepper, you know, whatever flavors you prefer. The so oh, the chipotle sauce? That is um, chipotle paste and um, garlic and rice vinegar and a little bit of vegan mayo. So on your recipe sheet, I said that you can modify this next recipe with um, using beer instead of water in your batter. So that's what I'm going to do today, except that I'm going to use um, an Angry Orchard hard cider. Oops. 
does add a nice flavor, but it's certainly optional. You can use plain water as well. And if you think you don't like mushrooms, <laughs> try this recipe. And remember, the mushrooms, they vary greatly. Um, some have a very strong flavor. Some are very, very mild. So please, uh, they're so good for you. Um, don't give up on mushrooms <laughs> if you think you don't like them. Try and find one that you do like. Because when you come to my cooking school in Japan, we're going to use a lot of mushrooms. <laughs> Are you going in September? No. I'm hoping to be there as a tourist, but not, um, not the school won't be open yet. How exciting. What city are you going to? Wow. How, ex how exciting. It's going to be somewhere in the Nagano area. So you'll go into Tokyo and then take a bullet train to the mountains. No, um, I'll still be here to do classes here, but um, my husband and I want to spend part of the year there. Um, my daughter lives there. She went to school in Tokyo and now is married and lives and works there. So it's a way of spending um, more time with her. And also, I didn't know I was going to, but I absolutely fell in, in love with Japan. Um, fabulous place, so. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is put my slaw together so that the flavors can meld, and I just need a bigger table up here so I can do this. So let's see, I think I'll use this bowl, and I'm going to start off by squeezing a lemon. Piece of a lemon, half a lemon. Uh, she went to Lakeland University. It's taught in English. They actually have quite a few schools taught in English in order to try and lure foreign students. So. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, she's um, pretty firmly established there now, so. Yes. Exactly. So all the more reason for the library to sponsor a trip for all of you. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm looking out for you guys. How about the first thing you buy with all the books? <laughs> we'll ask. All right. So I'm going to add... A um, little vegan sugar. So vegan, sh uh, right, first of all, regular sugar does not contain an animal product. But when it's processed, um, gelatin is used in the processing method. 
it's um, filtered through a gelatin filter, and that's why the processed sugar is pure white and uniform. Um, the vegan sugar is, does not go through that gelatin filter, and so the coloring is irregular, the sizes are irregular. So, um, this isn't raw sugar, but it's, but yeah, same idea. Uh, moreno, or Morena. Morena? Moreno. Okay. <laughs> um, it's easy to find. It comes in a clear bag with a green, like a green border on it. Yeah. And it, you know, again, a regular sugar does not contain animals' products, but if you like animals like I do, they don't need to be used to filter you know, to, to bleach it white, so. No, um, organic sugar does not go through the, the gelatin filter, so you can buy organic sugar as well and, uh, and know that that's okay. <laughs> uh, it's an animal, animal product. Uh, hooves, specifically. Yeah, hooves are ground up and uh, used for gelatin. So I'm going to put some green onions in here. Sharp knife is a necessity. And I'm going to put a spoonful of mayo in there. Um, <laughs> okay. How long do you have? <laughs> So, um, well, for starters, I was raised as a vegetarian. When I decided that I loved to cook, I tried to find a culinary school that didn't have um, butchering animals as part of the coursework. Because having never eaten meat, big animal lover, I just knew that I couldn't do that. Nowadays, for young chefs getting started, there's a lot of ways to find training where you know you don't have to do that. But way back when, um, didn't. Um, so I thought everything was great just um, being a vegetarian. And I really just wasn't aware, or maybe I didn't want to be aware, I don't know, of you know, the reasons why being a vegetarian isn't. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to use uh, strong, strong words or strong language. I don't want to offend anybody. Um, I just, I thought that was okay. And at one point in my mid-40s, um, I've always stayed up to date with um, the latest in nutrition and whatever, and I was at an annual conference in Las Vegas, and I went into um, a, uh, one of the presentations, and it was done by um, Dr. Michael Greger, someone I had never heard of back then. And listening to him talk just opened my eyes. I loved his approach. He's not pushy. He's not, you know, telling you, you know, he's not like that. Um, he just presents information, and then you can take it or leave it. But everything he said just made sense to me. And that was the start of giving up all animal products. And the reasons, so many. 
everything from the way we treat animals that are used for our benefit. Um, the environment is a huge one. Um, with the water, cutting down the rainforests, all of that that's done to support our desire to um, eat animals, that, that's huge. But then the health benefits. Um, you know, everything Dr. Greger said made sense to me. So why am I plant-based? All of those reasons are important to me. Um, did I ever cook with meat? Yes. I am I'm sad to say so, but um, if you can imagine back in the 1980s and 1990s trying to find work as a chef where you didn't have to cook meat, I didn't find anything. So um, luckily now, for many, many years now, I have not had to do that. And I will never do that again. It's a, you know, a choice now. There's just too many other options. So, um, yes, I know how to cook meat. I know how to make it taste delicious. But there are times where I was literally like teared up when I was cooking certain things, and I just, you know, it's in the past. Probably sounds silly to someone that's, you know, that's the norm for them. But for me, I just couldn't. Couldn't do it. Did I? Did I uh, ramble too much? <laughs> now you put mayo in. Hmm. You put mayo in. I'm sorry. I did put um, about a tablespoon of mayonnaise. So the mayonnaise, lemon juice, the um, vegan sugar. And I'm going to put um, quite a bit of black pepper in here as well. Um, I use the Best Foods brand. Yeah, it's a vegan, Best Foods vegan. What's that? Yeah, that's right. You were here last week. <laughs> yeah, I brought in my restaurant size one gallon container. Um, but you can buy, buy a normal sized one locally. <laughs> and I brought my friend the mandolin again this week. We made it through last week's class without any accidents, so I figured bring it out one more time. I'm just gonna, let's see, that's a little too thick. Just gonna stir this up, make sure all the cabbage is coated, and then we'll let it sit and let the vinegar do its thing with the cabbage, start to soften it, flavor it. So the fresh apple in here is a really nice touch, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Uh, yes, a Fuji. Yes, I try to find organic, and sometimes it's just not possible. But um, I do definitely prefer it. I feel much better about it for many reasons. Um, for my personal health, for the health of uh, the workers that pick our produce. Um, many reasons to buy organic. Okay, how am I doing on time? I'm almost afraid to ask. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Telling you, an hour is just not enough time. I have too many recipes to share. Okay, I will try and move a little faster. So 
let's make our spice mixture. We're gonna use some smoky paprika. And we're gonna use some cayenne pepper. More or less, depending on your personal preference. We're gonna put some garlic in there. And it's gotta have some granulated onion. Use a little more garlic. There we go. And also black pepper. And a little bit of salt. Depends what I'm um, doing, but this is sea salt today. Sometimes I use the regular iodized table salt just once in a while to make sure I get the iodine. And cornstarch. I do, um, I have trouble finding organic cornstarch. It's not as easy to find. And corn and wheat in our country, uh, heavy use of pesticides on those crops in particular. So I really try to use organic, but can't always find it. Panko breadcrumbs. And mix it around a little bit. And now the fun part. We'll open our cider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so just make sure you get it thoroughly combined and all of the lumps out of the uh, cornstarch. heating up. Whoops, sorry, I can't use the high setting. Unfortunately, this takes quite a bit of oil to get these cooked right. When you're using the avocado oil, it's expensive, but special occasion. So what kind of mushrooms to use? The best are something, the types that grow in clusters. So these are oyster mushrooms. What I really wanted to find today were, um, one of my favorites, they're called a mayatake. Um, but there weren't any to be found. So we're gonna have oysters. 
I made these at home last night with a different batch of mushrooms, and the mushrooms were really tough. So I'm hoping that these are a little fresher and not so tough and woody. So you never want to wash your mushrooms. Hopefully I wrote that down in the instructions. You just want to take a towel. If you see a, you know, any dirt on there, just brush it off with a dry towel. Mushrooms are very porous. And if you rinse them in water, they're going to soak up all that water. And you're going to have a waterlogged, yucky mushroom. So you just wipe them dry. But one of the tips is you can brush them, too. I find a little um, like a cotton dishcloth works really well, too, because it really just grabs the dirt and brushes it off. The best tip, though, is to carefully look at the mushrooms before you buy them and look for one that doesn't have a lot of dirt in it. <laughs> and that'll make your life a lot easier. But the mayatakis, I can make like a nice round cluster like this, which is a perfect like burger size. But uh, maybe next time we'll find some mayatakis. You can use a portobello. I'd highly recommend removing the gills, though, on a portobello. The flavor in the gills is what a lot of people um, that don't like mushrooms, that's what they've tasted, and that's what they think the whole mushroom tastes like. Um, the flavoring right in the gills is the very umami, almost kind of swampy <laughs> flavor. So if you remove that, um, you just Turn it upside down, take a spoon, and gently scrape the gills out. And then what you're left with is just mild, um, nice flavor. Let's see. I'm just going to coat these in the batter and drop them in the oil. Do you remember last week when we were cooking the tofu and I um, was saying the best thing is just to put it in there and leave it alone? It's the same with the mushrooms. You'll break the batter off if you try and um, scoot them around. When they're ready to turn, they're going to release from the bottom of your pan. So I'm just carefully like coating the undersides of this mushroom. Drop that in there. All right, so I'm guessing it's like two o'clock now. Oh, see. <laughs> Thank you. I like you. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I think, you know what, I think I'm going to just stop trying because um, I feel so disappointed in myself when I, I keep you guys here late, but okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> library staff feels the same as all of you. Yeah, they might want to go home at some point, but <laughs> that's true. They are getting a meal out of this. So. All right, my pan is full, so. Wow, I've got a lot of uh, cider left there. Your favorite beer or even water works just fine. 
But I saw the apple cider, and I have apples in the slaw, and I thought it's just meant to be. It'll all go well together. They're from Whole Foods. Yeah, anything carbonated works really well when you're making um, a batter like that. And with the cornstarch, the cornstarch too, um, if there's a decent amount of cornstarch in there, it'll be very light and very crisp. Okay, I'm going to serve these today on pretzel buns. You can use whatever you'd like, but um, I really like the pretzel buns. They've got a nice flavor, and uh, they're the perfect size for this. Yep, they're still kind of stuck, so we'll leave it a little bit more. These would be better if I toasted them, but I did not toast them today. That's all right. I'm going to put a little bit of mayonnaise on the buns. There. Whole Foods. <laughs> You know all my habits. I run into a lot of you at Whole Foods. And there's some... <laughs> I think she's already left... Um, I think she left at the end of the season, but I have a woman that's... sweet woman who's at most... Uh, always comes to the fall classes. Um, but I run into her at Whole Foods all the time. And she always very kind of discreetly is trying to look in my cart, like, <laughs> I, I could go two ways with that. Maybe she's, like, just curious what products I buy, or is it, does she think maybe I have a salmon filet buried in down there or something? <laughs> she's trying to catch me out, but uh, no. <laughs> but it's funny, yeah. Um, I live in this community. I see you guys out and about. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, tomorrow night work for you? <laughs> Sometimes somebody wants to host a little cooking party at home. It's kind of fun to do an interactive cooking class for dinner. But yeah, sure, you guys can all come over for dinner sometime. <laughs> I've told the library that if they ever like, have an auction, like a fundraiser or something, I would definitely donate a 
dinner party. Host the dinner party. And provide dinner. So they haven't taken <laughs> they haven't taken me up on that yet, but I hope they do someday because I would enjoy doing that. This is gonna look kind of sad and lonely on this plate. I don't think I have anything left to give it some color. Oh well. You guys will just have to forgive me. up there. I have not. Do you like them? Some of them have egg in them, I've noticed. I have read the labels. Some are vegan, but some are vegetarian. So. All right, so you have to use your imagination today and picture these as one round, beautiful disc of mushrooms instead of a cobbled together <laughs> multiple pieces. But you get the idea. Uh, macrobiotic cooking. <laughs> well, I always go back to the blue zones. The blue zones are the places in the world where people live the longest with the best quality of life and the one thing all of those different parts of the world have in common is that they all eat a plant-based diet. And, you know, for some people that might think plant-based eating is a fad or something, I just, I think about those parts of the world. They don't count protein like we do in this country. They don't, you know, think about macros and micros. They just eat plants. And that kind of, that's what I think about. If I can just get people excited to eat more plants, then I feel like hopefully I'm doing some good. Lots of slaw. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is not like a first date uh, <laughs> type entree. <laughs> um, somewhere in between. The mushrooms go on the sandwich hot, but um. You know, the other ingredients are cold, so there we go. All right. Thank you. All right.
I, I ran past two o'clock, but we got it done. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I do have one question, though. Sorry. Um, so this spring, I just decided to go back to kind of like plant-based cooking 101, and I did in this series, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, in the fall, for multiple times, I've done um, a theme for each class. And I'm wondering what you prefer. Do you like it broken down by dinner ideas, breakfast ideas, or how did you feel about the format when it was like all Mediterranean food, all Japanese food? You like the themes? Okay. All right. Thank you. That's very helpful. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Oh. We have prizes. All right. Oh, you need, you need one. Okay. You want one? You're welcome. Would you like one? Oh.